All right, and here we have it. Mr. Anthony Kudamay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming show. on. Thank you. Oh, episode what number? Show? Wow. <laughs> it's episode. What do you think it is? I don't know. I'm hoping it's 40. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it is up episode 43. So you've watched the previous 42, correct? Yeah, I'll this one. this one. Love it. Yeah. Now we're up to 43. Yes, so yeah. we get the game. All right, we get the best. There's a, there's a couple of good 43s, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah. There's another one. Swan McGuire. Yeah, Swan McGuire. Yeah. So I knew a lot about him too before I started. And uh, obviously uh, he had his name on the locker too. So it wasn't yeah. like I was the only one. But, uh, 43 was significant for me only because my mum was born in 1943 so when I got the number 43 I was never going to change but if I'm right in 91 if I was correct I was number 46 and then in 92 they gave me 43 they thought maybe we just lower it a little you know all right hey listen this all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, now there's a bit of a black mark on your name right? yeah. because who'd you used to bury for well black <laughs> <laughs> and who was your favourite player? And what? Uh, I loved the, all the Collingwood players. Yeah. Ricky Barham was probably one of them. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. Yeah. I don't know how, but like, I loved them all. Like, yeah, you've got your Renee King and Bill Pickett. Nah, Dakes was course. God, right? Dakes, oh, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Everyone oh, loved yeah. Yeah. Tony Shaw used to walk. Uh, his sister and and brother-in-law lived basically two houses from we, where we grew up. And so, Laylor. Yeah, Laylor, Laylor, yeah. Laylor. So we used to say, oh, yeah, Tony Shaw, you know? Yeah. So it was all, all the players, even Ronnie Weirmout, right? There was just Stan Magro. There was some great Collingwood players. Oh, of course, of course. At the time, man. Yeah. Carl Collingwood, yeah. Richmond, they were like some great songs. Yeah. It's a big, uh, big... So ha when you actually first get to the club, is there this thing in the back of your mind, like... Obviously, you're an athlete, you're always going to give 100%, but did you feel that there was a little bit of a, a churn in your gut when you got to Carlton? Well, I got the letter when I was 14, I lived in the Carlton zone, and so when I seen the Carlton emblem, I was disappointed. I wanted to see the <laughs> on there, to be honest. Of course! I really was disappointed. My brother was mad Carlton, yeah. but I went down and we tried out in the scholarship uh, yeah. squad, and uh, we started with like 140 kids every week. We trained once a week for 10 weeks. Yeah, then he yeah. got picked, he played off in the school holidays in the carnival. Yeah. So I played two years under 15s here. Luke Sulos was our coach. He played me a full back. I made the Victorian team that year also. And then I had to give away my beloved uh, Lola Football Club to then take on the under 19s uh, there yeah, at yeah, Carlton. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I was still Collingwood supporter until we played them round 21. It was the first time I played against them in 1992. It was my fifth AFL game. We came up against the Icon. You were know. still a Collingwood I was still Collingwood. Yeah, 1990 I celebrated the premiership. <laughs> and then when we lost, we lost that day. I mean, don't get me wrong, I wanted to beat them. But when we lost that day, that night there, I had an unlimited drink out of the World Night Club. <laughs> My mates were just, all my Collingwood mates were giving it to him. I'm like, boys, what's going on here? And anyway, from that moment I was, the hatred of Collingwood started. Don't ask me how or why. Yeah, it was yeah. that then when I thought, actually, I'm a Calder man now, because everyone can see me as a Calder man, and that was it. So yeah. I still, as much as I they call, I call them boo as I do my tips, they're still, they're an iconic club like yeah, Carlton and Essendon and Richmond. We actually need them all to do well. Of course. The, you, know, you can see like what, what Carlton's doing at the moment. Yeah. You can see the crowd, you can see like the vibe in Melbourne. We make AFL and so we need the four clubs to really yeah. do well. You know, it makes AFL more interesting. Exactly, absolutely. A hundred percent. The groundswell's been phenomenal this year. It's nice to see for once. Yeah, it's been a while. Been too long. So when, we'll go right back to the start because you're great northern uh, suburbs boy. Uh, Glasgow, he was from yeah, Laylor too. He was, he was. Yeah, he was telling me the story that once when, where he got his pace from was he was once chased by the Thomastown Sharks. No, was he? <laughs> I didn't get to that extreme. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he was. Anyway. Yeah, but it, it was. It was a tough area, man. It was a tough place to play football too, yeah. man. Those days there in the Northern Suburbs, yeah. Yeah, I started at East Thomastown, which was a local club. My brother and I started. I was at eight years of age. I think we won three or four premierships in a row, and then. Okay. Uh, obviously it wasn't a, maybe we even played maybe at a higher level, I'm not sure. A little footy club then came and approached my mum and dad and said, you know, your kids would love to have your kids at Lalo Football Club. So some of our friends that were playing at East Thomas then went to Lalo and must have said, these guys can play, these Cuda brothers, we should go and talk to them. So they came and spoke to mum and dad, they're like, whatever you want to do. We're like, oh, we know some play, let's go Lalo. It was the best decision we made. Lalo Footy Club was just an unbelievable place. You know, a lot of Europeans, a lot of Aussies, yeah. it was like one, Happy family, yeah. there was no like problems, you know. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. 
very successful era at the local yeah. football cup, and I think there was a fortress there that people didn't like to, to go to local football cup and play against us because it was, it was a tough club. And in particular, the year level that was above me that my brother played, and they were. I was in admiration at all the, a lot of the players because they were physically very tough. Yeah. And there was a lot of brawls. I actually seen a couple of all-in brawls that included parents too, which wasn't great back yeah. then. <laughs> it wasn't great, but anyone that came around the football club, they, they they worried for that reason. Yeah. Uh, and I wasn't one of them, but it was just. You know, the but it made you like, as a sim man, being a junior and playing in that sort of level with yeah. that sort of guy, mate, it toughens you up, yeah. man. You get in there, you're ready. The fun times of them, what I remember was, you know, jumping on our bikes, winter, winter, yeah, you know, with your mates, man. We, we rode from where I was, probably took 20 minutes, because Layla Footy Club was on the other side of Layla yeah. where I was, and we rode there, we trained, we went to the milk bar, we sort of lucky, fish and <laughs> whatever we had after training and hung out all together. And like, not like we had a lot of money, man, but like we'd say whatever oh, it was, man, please yeah. give me a dollar or two to go and eat. But it was just, that sort of puts always a smile on my face. Because when I had to give away Layla to take up in the 19s and come, it was a different ball game. It was yeah. like, you're going to train with the big boys now, you've got to grow up. Yeah. And we got thrashed. Ross Henshaw was our coach, right? Yes. And he was scary, man. He was really scary. So it wasn't like I looked forward to the under 19s. I was always like, man, I wish I was still playing at Layla, yeah. but if I wanted to go and achieve my dream of playing AFL footy, I knew I had to take that step. And so that was the uh, part of the uh, being in the uncomfort zone, yeah, you know, not being comfortable anymore and going there. But luckily, I had my brother there, and I had a lot of we had around our areas. We had like incredible sports people. Like, you know, here I am, Australian champion athletics. I had a friend who was like second or third fastest in Australia, who was a Victorian yeah. champion. Like other guys, and so there was a group of us that grew up together that actually went and competed in nationals and athletics yes. and that as well. So I was very blessed in that sort of way that a lot of us and, you know, a lot of people went the other way of maybe, you know, cigarettes and doing some of other course. stuff. Yep. That was Which the, was easy to do that. Yeah, days. because there was that clan over there and then there was a the sporting clan. I was in that sporting clan. I was never going to deviate from there. If yep. someone wanted to leave and go over there, I was never going to do yep. that because I wanted to go and try to achieve my dream. And I was always one totally against that and always yep. have been. So I'm very lucky in that sort of way. I chose the right thing because the cooler dudes went over there. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Yeah, that's it. Went so who's there. the cooler dude? But now who's yeah. the cooler yeah, dude? <laughs> that's yeah, debatable just, too. Just so. quickly, because you, you did, you were a good, like, um, like a, a athlete at yeah. the time. So you, the hurdles, I think. Yeah, and high jump. High yeah. jump, and you were exactly. close to, well, you did represent Victoria. Yeah. In the under 15s, 16s. 16s, yeah. and then you were close to, like, they're always saying that, there was a chance maybe in the Olympics. So was that a massive decision for you? Like, yeah, it was, was a yeah. Decision? I was Australian champion high jumper, a in high jump. A couple of years, Tim Forsyth came along, he was too good though. So I was never going to be high jump. He was the second best junior high jumper in the world and went on to win a bronze medal at the Olympics. Then one of Commonwealth Games got made phenomenal. Yeah. I wasn't tall enough and yeah. And playing footy in the winter sort of didn't help my athletics too because it's a different style. And then you come back and you've got to be a power athlete but then you're running so much playing footy. Yeah. I had the Australian record 110 metre hurdles in the under 17. So that was just before I made the decision. And uh, I won so many multi events which I like decathlon. So yes, yes. if I went to the Olympics, maybe as a hurdler or maybe as a decathlete, but I'd never know. I mean, Carl Roth would be a contract at the age of 17. It was a three year deal. It wasn't so much the money, because it was very minimal money, very, very minimal money, but it was about, you know, achieving my dream. And I, I looked at the athletes and, like, I thought the 1988 Seoul Olympics 100 metre sprint was the greatest event of all time in athletes. It was Ben Johnson, Carl Lewis, Nickford, oh, yeah. Chris wow. Ben got caught on steroids, but a lot, seven out of the eight athletes all throughout their career had issues about some It was back, like that back then, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, so I reckon they made, like, course, you know, yeah. Ben, the person that, you know, I mean, Mate, whatever. I think that anyway. Ben, I thought it was the greatest. But <laughs> they got caught on on, on drugs. In, in my mind, I'm thinking, geez, maybe to be an athlete, you've got to you know be that sort of way. So to me, it was more like you know what, footy was look, football was more like gladiators at that time, and they were iconic to us. Footy was a religion here in Melbourne, uh, you know, in Victoria, and I was like, man. Football is the way to go. You know, it's a team sport too. Athletics can get lonely. I just thought I had a bit of chance. I had an offer to go to America. I had an American College um, Division One offer to go for my wow. athletics over there. Yeah, I didn't know that. I didn't even. I've never really even mentioned it. But uh, um, first on the jump up. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and uh, my younger, my oldest boy Jamie, who's uh, yeah, I wanted to play yeah. uh, basketball and all that. And yeah. When I showed yeah. him that, he's like, what? That is good. <laughs> like the college and it was just like out of this world stuff. So yeah. Anyway, I chose the right school. I think so. Well, we think so. Yeah, we man. think we so. We loved it. Speak. Yeah. You had a. Oh, here we are. <laughs> <laughs>
What are you doing here? Is that Dickie Nate? <laughs> no, 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 we know Andrew, tell everyone, mate, but no one's yet to believe you. Um, you spoke about, like, when you were younger, uh, at the Laylord days, you said, like, the older boys, you sort of had admiration for those stuff. Who was sort of a player that you looked up to when you are at Carlton? Like, when you first got there and you thought, geez, I want to maybe not be like him, but someone you followed and someone you wanted to, to earn the respect of when you first got to the, to the Carlton a, footy club? There's a couple of good ones there. Yeah, yeah. pretty good ones. I don't know if I really wanted to, like, look at anyone and go, I want to play like them. I'm not sure, but, like, in, in awe of a lot of players. I mean, Sticks, you know, first time I met him, or... I was still uh, in the 19s, I reckon I maybe had a training session with the seniors, maybe one night and I met Sticks and he, and he said, love him, would never remember that, but of course I did, but you know, Sticks was surrounded by maybe 13 or 14 or 15 quality leaders around him, which made it so much easier for him. Yeah. He was the greatest leader, no doubt about it, but it always helps when you're surrounded by great leadership, and so as a Collingwood supporter, I, you know, my brother was Calvin, and every year he'd be cheering and I'd be crying, and I never really understood why until I got to the football club and and seen the culture that was there. And it was yeah. an unbelievable place, and that's where I always sound very fortunate I walked in when I did. The first 12 years of my 17 years at that football club, I got to experience the greatest culture in AFL footy, and that was, you know, great leadership around, but it was led by the greatest person of all, John Elliott. I loved him, but I don't care what anyone says, I stand by the man. Why? Because he created a family environment, yeah. and we were successful. Yeah. Why weren't we successful after that when the others came in, and that, a lot of other presidents, you know, walk in and walk out and you get just go, you know what, mate? You didn't. You did things that you thought maybe were wrong. Yeah, but really, you yeah. know, he did with heart. He loved yeah. us. He loved the players. Yeah. And I, I feel yeah. like he was probably one person who always dreamed of playing footy but never made it. But he felt like being present. He was part of the boys. He was. Life. I thought the great of, of Jack was like he never walked into the change rooms when we didn't win. Oh, you know what? I, I just love that. <laughs> it's in its own. Like yeah. yeah. And the first year I went there and I listened to him speak. Oh, I was so nervous and just listened to John. And it was all about winning premierships. And he basically, without saying it, he basically said, if you want to be remembered here, we've got to win premierships. Yeah, and so I, I was like, okay, I understand what I need to do. You know what I mean? It raised the bar for me. And I knew I had to get better in order to uh, be part of this footy club. And that's what John did. It wasn't like that in the last five years. It was the complete opposite. 100%. And we'll get into that. Like, yeah, no, it we was, won't. No, we won't. Right, get into it? All right, cool. We're only getting into the good camera, times. Mate. No, yeah. yeah, oh, yeah, fair enough. Camera. Well, you yeah. know what? Like, you know what? Everyone speaks about, but you don't even have to be. You just saw what happened on yeah. the field. Yeah. That's 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 no, my no, opinion. Is that, like, like we don't we have saw, to be. Yeah. It just was like, and growing up, like, it's we're it's about it's the same age. I might be a couple of years older, but we grew. I grew up in that. There was winning, and there was that's it yeah. for Carl. Yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, after that two thousand, we kind of lost that completely. Yeah. And it was just like, for me, it was just like I'm still walking over my chest now. Now. But we're on the bottom of the ladder. The ladder. I, I, I just couldn't, yeah. couldn't so understand that, that. There's think a about correlation, it. isn't there? One yeah. person goes, and then it all. Oh, yeah, it just did, man. Without Jack, he was one who may just kept it there with the, with the people around him, and we felt like we were part of the family after that. I won't go into detail of it, but like yeah. you think of. You know, my early years walking down the cheer squad, like, you know, like before the games, Andrew and I would be there hanging out, like, you know, saying that hello to people in the cheer squad. Like, it was all about the family environment, you know, going to the social club that John would get the three best players and say, right, yeah, Kuda, come over. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, third best on ground, Kuda, second best, Brattles, and, you know, the best on ground was Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> the best. You know what, yeah, and like everyone would go and sing the song, and, you know, yeah. it was just, it was an unbelievable place to be, and we knew yeah. everyone, we knew the staff and everything. It was yeah. why do you think that's changed because I, I look at the club now like, I'm only 28 yes, yeah, so right? so I'm born in 1994 and I was one when we won our last flag yeah. and I don't you were playing when we won yeah, our last flag yeah, that's right. I don't understand how it can go from what it was to what it has been for the last I do. 15 years I do. <laughs> Leave it at we'll that. Talk about <laughs> anyway, listen, we'll go. We can make those memories, right? So we, uh, you're playing your first. Do you remember your first game? Yeah, of course. Of course you do. I remember I was emergency six or seven times that year before finally they picked me. Yeah. And it was round thirteen against Adelaide. I was playing full back in nineteen ninety two. Actually, won a reserve best in Ferris that year, playing at full back. Yes. It was a position that. 
you know, it wasn't like I'm never going to excel there, <laughs> like, like really to showcase my skill. But as a position, I guess I just had to play yep. in, uh, in order to maybe, you know, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, the club decided to play fullback. And, uh, so yeah, I remember my first game, I, I was so extremely nervous. And uh, yeah, really nervous. And when I finally they said, you're playing, I was like, oh my goodness me, am I going to be able to get a kick? Or, you know, am I going to do something silly on the field? You know, all those thoughts go through your head. But uh, at all of these people called me up, and when you got a surname like Kudafidis in the white pages back in the old days, anyone had access to my number, mate, they could bring it home, mum and daddy, so no problem. Get me on the phone, hello, oh, who's this? Remember me? Oh, yeah, man. Uncle Nick, my uh, Uncle Tassos, they all I've never heard of them before. You know what I mean? You'll get tickets, you get tickets. Uh, Zio Luciano. Zio Luciano. Yeah. Oh, both, mate. Both, right? You, you did know, too. I had both, mate, the greasy cans. And, uh, so they were, they were good days, eh? Like, and that, that made it fun. But yeah, the first game I remember, I started on the bench and came on. And I did all right. I took a few marks. I missed an easy goal that I should have kicked. But one of my first kicks was was a goal. Second a bit kick. Of a snap. Yeah, I got the first one. Got Second smothered, kick. I think. Yeah. Second kick was a goal. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it, it was a great day. And we won also that day. So yeah. I think I finished with around that 15 positions. I think if I'm right. I'm did you? Right did you? Um, when did you think I can do this? I that a lot of, uh, 1994, it was really, <laughs> yeah, it really was. I mean, 91, I didn't get a game, 92, I played six and 93, eight games, and then I got dropped halfway through 94. I thought it was the end of my career, to be honest. Really? Yeah. And then I got picked on the wing two weeks later, and uh, I never looked back from that moment. So there was many times that I doubted myself and unsure if I was going to make it. And, uh, you know, I got thrown in every position and I never settled and I didn't probably know what the coach really exactly wanted from me. And then eventually, uh, luckily, you know, I started to put it together uh, uh, just in time for the greatest year, 1995. So it was a big, long struggle, three and a half years, uh, to really cement myself as a senior player. It was very tough. 100%. But then 93, which, which uh, you didn't get picked for the grand final, as you said, you didn't play that many games. And you did, you know, did that. Yeah, he was yeah. happy about that. But then 94, you lost straight sets, yeah. straight out. And that were your first couple of finals. I, I asked this of Peter Dean, I don't want to be named right, I asked this of Peter Dean, right, and I said, when you went into that pre-season of 95, right, what was the, you know, what was your thought between the plays like, all right, we're going to hit, we're going to crack this, oh, I don't know, is this our last chance, what are we going to, like, what was the mindset? I think everyone knew the window was closing because there's some Asian yeah. superstars, so I, I think we knew that. I, I was shocked with the way that we played in 94, I don't know what it was. When we trained too hard, I'm not sure, but we thrashed West Coast that year, like round 21 or whatever it was, yeah. round 20 by 11 goals at Princess Park, and then we thrashed Richmond, I think, and then we lost to Essen, which was a shock. Yes. And then we played Melbourne, we had a good first half, and then uh, they came back and beat us, and they were seventh, and we were second. And yeah. then we played Geelong, and they had four or five superstars out. Yeah. Best. <laughs> like, I thought maybe we'll just walk straight. They thrashed us, and we did not even have a chance that day as well. So I'm not sure, like even Ola had doubts myself in how far we could go as a team. And uh, luckily in 95 we put it together, man. We had those two shock losses to the two bottom teams, and I'd, I'd never known how or why. Oh, I reckon everyone bought houses. That's what I keep saying. <laughs> <laughs> I missed out. I missed out. Like two, two bottom sides? <laughs> yeah, I know I missed out. I can say that. And I know a couple of players that did during that. I'm not going to mention names. They could have told me. I would have uh, laid low myself. Anyway, I just bust my gut. Yeah. <laughs> But after that, after that we put it together. Yeah, we had a meeting. I remember we had to choose our team who we believed should be in the team. It was like really, oh, yeah, yeah. Man. We sat down in the room and yeah, Parga got us doing stuff like that. Anthony oh. Shaw, who was our sports psychologist, and then uh, we put it all together. Man, that, sticks led the, the led the boys. That year, did you who did you not sing the theme song after wins? No, no, into the, right, you no, did sing sang, yeah. into the into the grand final. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now we always sang sang the songs. Um, yep. I don't know if we sang sang it as enthusiastically enthusiastically as yeah, what they yeah. do nowadays after the yeah, win. Yeah, because yeah, it's after winning against the Gold Coast. It was like okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was okay. But it was all about you know winning premierships and that back then, so it's a little bit different. Yeah. 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 I always say like another player told me this that. Within each line, you had your, your own little like yeah. group, and the back line, for example, this particular player told me one of the players reckoned that they were the problem when they were delivering the ball, so they made a conscious effort to like 
delivered the ball to the full line themselves and we're talking people like Peter Dean and Ange and then they had this little competition too where how many goals they could kick between and that. And I think that's a big part. Like you almost coached yourself, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, we did in 95, yeah. Which sports yeah. psychologist Anthony Stewart came after, he worked with me in 94 and helped me enormously. He was a great guy. And uh, yeah, then the club employed him. So he was like, Parker, you've got a lot of leaders in this football club, so why don't you, uh, you know, get handed over to them more and course, give us yeah, some yeah. responsibility. Yeah. And maybe we felt like we uh, took more responsibility, you know, of it. But the game plan was very similar to the way that Parker did it. It was just a little bit, you know, of just us. Now, could it have been that or were we just ready? Uh, who knows? But, I reckon a little bit of both. Yeah, I think a bit of both. And we were ready that year. And St- Sticks led us so well. And, we had some stars. Yeah, we had some absolute superstars, man. I was surprised actually looking back now, you know, we didn't win more premierships because yeah. we were we had some it was a great it was a great I point. think it was maybe like one or two missed opportunities there, but you know, like you did the best thing though, you stopped Essendon from winning it in nineteen ninety nine, which I still think and I was only five at the time, but I've watched that game countless times, the nineteen ninety nine premiers. It's, it's probably the great I think I think it's the greatest game in AFL. In that modern AFL history, I think one of the greatest quarters. That last quarter, man. Okay, I want two things. What did John Elliott say before the game? Because I think there was was it after or before the game? I think he came. Did he come up to you? He went up to the group and he, he uttered a few words. And then in game, you made the move to to play more on the ball, get the guy forward. Yeah, so I think Jack Jack sort of said something after the game. After yeah. the game, right, right, right. So Jack. It was always something outspoken and always <laughs> you sit there going, why did you say that for me? <laughs> put us under pressure, but that's when he was just like, just honest. And mate, he made the club, man. He, he was the face of the club and he was fantastic. And uh, Eddie Maguire was the one that took over the realm and, and did well with Collingwood. And he was the new age John Elliott. Yeah, he was. He did it right. 100%. And, um, the move at three quarter time, I remember going to the huddle and I was like, please just put me in the middle. I was playing in defence all day. Yep. So I felt like did you I say something? Man. No, I didn't say no, I never did. You know? No one ever said anything? Looked above and said, please. <laughs> <laughs> I feel. So, yeah, and uh, it didn't, uh, didn't happen at three quarter time, but maybe two or three minutes into the last quarter, I seen the runner running towards me and that, that I knew okay. then yep. I, I was going to be yep. in the midfield and uh, yeah, the bounce and, and it started. Justin Murphy got the ball and I was like, I was sprinted so hard. He obviously must have seen me then booted in, took that mark and yeah. it started. Man. Like Essendon, the way they played in the third quarter, they were capable of playing that the entire day, but they just didn't. And Mark Nakura, who I thought was always Essendon's dangerous player, he was just an absolute superstar. He's a friend of mine, but I played to a couple of him and I watched his career, and he was so dangerous. He was. He would have kicked that goal, I reckon, 90 time, 99 times. Remember the call? Mercury! Mercury! One, one yeah. behind. Yeah, that's it. And yeah, that's and the difference. difference. Even he <laughs> could have stopped when he kicked that ball. Even he couldn't believe it. Yeah. So, yeah, that was one of the great, no doubt, apart from all the premierships, I'm sure the current supporters would put that game down as one of the, you know, the greatest game. I think anyone that was there, and I was at a function last night, anyone that was there, they're just, they're just like, man, Kuda, that, that was, yeah, that, just like, they just talk about it, it's just like, I think can't believe it. If you look at the game now, like the way, you know, all these, all these data and analytics and super coach points, I think it was one of, I think it was one of the highest rated quarters since yeah. champion data. Yeah, came yeah, in since yeah. Champion Data came in with Ted Hopkins, so yeah, well, turned the game on its head. Yeah. No, no, I think no. you actually, I think you actually turned the game on its head. Just like you, your body type, the prototype play, you know, the you know the Adonis body and yeah. that type of athletic play. Do you feel that you you changed the game in that regard? Yeah, I think so. Like I was, the, you know, six foot three walking into the midfield when six yep. foot threes weren't supposed to be in there. You know, yeah, to be able to run right. around and do what I did was able to mark the ball and get the ball on the ground and whether it was stoppages or whatever. And so and then they started putting people in plays like Pavlich and Goods and all these. So and recruiters went out there. Sam Mitchell mentions it in his book that. He wasn't so much of an athlete, so suffered yeah. a little and didn't get drafted because of that reason. Blames me because every <laughs> recruiter was looking for, for the athlete back then. And so yeah. I started something different, but I was able to play in every position, which makes it dangerous because when I look now too, and I think there's some great players, but really they can only play in one position. One or two. Yeah, yeah, and I sacrificed a lot when I think, you know what, I could have played my entire career in the midfield and my stats maybe have looked a lot I more different. Yeah. But I played for the team in any position that they needed me to play in, whether it was full forward, if someone was out of play full forward, I play in defence, and when they needed me in the midfield, I play in the midfield as well. And so, 
you know, in hindsight though, it made me a little bit different to the, the normal way. It's their menu. With it. Look, I've said this before, and people are going to argue on that. When you were at your best in that 99, 2000, kind of, you were, to me, you were the best from 94 onwards, but there was this period where you almost won the brown line on that. Pound for pound, you would have had to be one of the best footballers that I've seen because you were doing that. You were you were playing anywhere, you know? Like, you got Gary Ablett, great player, exactly. can't play in defence. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? It was just that, I thought at a time, man, you were just a prototype, and, and like you said, now there's like a million of them running yeah. around, you know? Paddy like Cripps. Paddy Cripps. He's the man who started yeah, it, don't, don't forget. Definitely. Hey, tell me something. Adidas boots. Yeah. There was a period of time where you had this little bit of a dilemma, Nike come on board, and you had the Adidas boots, but you stood firm, didn't yeah, you? I did. I think it was time I had to stand up to the bully. That was the time before. <laughs> yeah, they had me before that, and that was the time that uh, they had the new marketing people that went in there. And I think the deal was any time they changed companies, they would get a certain percentage. So how easy? Let's change from Adidas to Nike. Yeah. And uh, the club has been with Adidas ever since I remember. Like yeah. even as a young kid, it was yeah, three yeah. clubs at the Golden Football Club. Right. And I had a contract with Adidas. So I think by the club signing with Nike, they just said, I oh, know you, you know, could, that means you can have Cooter also. It was like, hang on a minute, I'm signed with Adidas. A European company. And so I loved Adidas back then. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I was at three stripes. It actually meant something to me. And uh, so, yeah, my manager went into battle and, and we fought the club, which, you know, in hindsight, you don't want to do that. You know, as a player, you feel bad. But you know what? It was time. Um, and uh, I almost missed the game because of it, but then the club... Do you want me to take the jacket and beanie off? Or? No, 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 Nice. And we spent three days at Adas head office, man. That, that was yeah. an absolute dream, man. If I could do that again, That's yeah, it really That's was. And you know, I spoke to the big boss there. They had they made Cuda boot for me. They had the Cuda, on, you know, written on the on yeah. the tongue. I never wore them because I think it was bad enough, like wearing Adas boots where everyone else is yeah, Nike. And then yeah. if I went out with a Cuda boot, they actually molded my feet and produced free boots for me, yeah. specifically for me. And. Uh, you know, they said, go go to the shop and go shopping. So I said, lady, uh, where's your biggest bag? It was like that big. I said, perfect. <laughs> and I said, I'll take that. Just That's the best. <laughs> and they got European gear. I didn't know though in Europe, like in the Germans, and you got XL, though, it was like triple XL. Man, the gear was that big, I didn't know. So <laughs> yeah, a lot of it got wasted. Just to put on a bit more size. <laughs> yeah, over there. But there, I, I was very lucky. Man. When you were a kid, did you ever think you were going to be in the Adidas slide for no. one day? Of course no. you wouldn't. Of course I remember going to Adidas as a young kid when I was doing athletics. They never had spikes big enough for my feet. Like I was only size 13 or 14, right? But they never had them. And I remember going to Adidas and they like didn't really help me. And I thought one day I'm going to get you back. <laughs> I love it. And then I became their sponsor player for a long time. That's the best. For them, yeah. That is unreal, man. Awesome. Uh, the club now, um, obviously Bossy's come in. Yeah. He's done a great job so far at the halfway point of the season. What do you think has been the difference between what's happened maybe in the last four to five years to, to where you see the club now and how do you see the progressing going forward? Because I, I think we do have a lot of good players. Yeah. Yeah, I know you, you, you're still keeping close tabs on, on the club as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't study the form guide or yeah, anything yeah, no, like no. that, but I watch from afar and yeah. I love the club and I want to, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that the boys can win a Premiership very soon and I'll be so wrapped for them. And, yeah. and all of us uh, supporters have been waiting for a long time and we've got to be the number one. Premiership, Absolutely. you know, I mean, we're going to be unprecedented. Right. We have to lead the way. We can't let Essendon or Gone, you know, what I mean? like we have to. So exactly. we're due. But look, I think the club's been bubbling in the last two years. In honesty, yep. Boss has done a great job, and to have Aaron Hamill there too, who's a phenomenal yes. player, Carl yeah. Hamill, and a great Carl man. Of course, went to St Kilda too. But like his hard hardness too to bring to the club, yeah. he got the most out of his ability, uh, Hamill. So. And Voss, I've played him, you know, quite a few times. He's, he's a Mate, champion, man. How tough was that guy? He was tough and hard, man. He was hard at it. I love the way he played, because I sort of played, you know what I mean, just that way as well. And, yeah. and uh, we played tough footy together. Um, so I don't know what the difference. I mean, he's been bubbling the last two years, but maybe Vossi got him at the perfect time. And he's a great leader. And uh, I'm just thrilled for him, because, you know, he didn't have a lot of success at Brisbane. But yeah. you know what? To his credit, he's gone to Port Adelaide and done, done the hard work he and now he's come back. And now, you know what, he's, he's got it now and yep. hopefully if he can win a supremacy, we're going to lift him up above. <laughs> 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 this is the longest, yeah. you know, this is the longest. Yeah. 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 
yeah, 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 for yeah. the blues, man. Yeah, like, yeah. And as I said, man, I grew up in an era, same as you, like, that we were just... Yeah, you were spoiled. We were spoiled. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, man, people like go to you, like, I'm thinking what people used to think about us from the outside. We're a, we're a hopeless sign, you know, yeah. but deep inside I'm going, no, like no. my son, you met my son, like yeah. I'm going to him, we used to be good, <laughs> mate, we used to be good, and, and he, do, he, do, he doesn't get it, but he's having it like the same Kilda, the yeah. Spray, the Melbourne to the yeah. 1980s, you know what I mean, like just losing everything. Look how like quick we, like the membership, and as soon as we yeah. get any sort of set, man, we all come out, yeah. don't we? Most powerful club in the competition, we just haven't seen it for a long time, and you know what, to be honest, Richmond was the same. I reckon Parker yeah. had a hatred for Richmond that I never really understood because they weren't successful during my time when I said, yeah. yeah, 1980, they beat Connolly, so I cried, whatever. Yeah. But for a long period there, they weren't. And I didn't understand the enormity of the football yeah, club. But Parker obviously did because in history, they, right. went, they must have gone through a lot with Richmond. Oh. So I remember one game in 94 was about two weeks before the finals and we are all joking before the game and laughing and Parker came out, he was so angry. I'm like, man, we're playing Richmond, relax, you know? like. But he just like had that, you know, that hatred, for, hatred for Richmond. And then once they started winning, you've seen the Richmond and how many supporters they had. Enormous. Yeah. I didn't know they were out there. You know, yeah. what I mean? yeah. members. Would you ever believe some ever. First club ever. So told the members that a lot. I'm sure we lost along the way because it's been so, so long. But like, I, I reckon we can convert them back because we've got some mate. Really talented players and talented players that we love watching, you know, like the Kernos and Mackays and Cripps. These players don't come around often. Walsh. We've got a few in the team. Walsh as well, yeah. We've got Weeder and Down Bad. Yeah. I'm talking, but, you know, we've got some yeah, really exciting players that, you know, we love watching. So, And there's more, not just them, there's more. No, 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 no they're, they're, they're the names in headlines. Yeah, yeah names no, there's heaps more, but exactly. like you said, with those players and now what we've been building around it and maybe half a system that Ross is. Oh, Man, I can see some bright years yeah. coming up ahead, man. And of course, in that, because we've had a lot of injuries this year, you need a bit of luck too, yeah, don't you? Of course, of course. We had a lot. Of, we were unlucky year 2000, 2001 to really well, see their best. I mean, you know, I got injured in 2000 yeah. and we may have missed Brad, was that year? Yes. Oh, one, I did my knee in the second week of the final. I think Rats yeah. did his elbow. Like, yeah. we just were unlucky with injuries during those times. 100%. And all those Western won in year 2000 and deserved to win and probably would have won the grand final, but you just never know. We won 13 games in a row that year, and then the injuries started. They lost the Bulldogs, we just lost the Bulldogs too. And we didn't lose Wayson on the lot round 20, and I, I lasted maybe 10 minutes that day. And I think Brad was on the bench, yeah. So we'll never know, and then 01 was the same thing. We probably weren't as consistent in 01, but definitely we would have had a chance in 2000. We would have loved to have played off against this number. They played Melbourne, Melbourne we beat by 99 points throughout that year. And it would have been great to imagine seeing a Cunnison in grand final on YouTube. That, that would have been ideal. But whatever happened in 99, we had the like, and then we just were unlucky those two years. And even 2002, we had so many injuries. And Wayne Britton, who was an unbelievable coach, and he was, you know what, the best coach that I had. In terms of Spartan's game plan and the way he made us feel, he, he was phenomenal. He, he, you know, players like Hamill and Franchina and Darren Hume and Mark Porter, you know, yep. all these, like, uh, uh, Adrian Hickman, there's more, I just can't think of them off the top of my head. Yep. He basically got them from ground level and built them up to the players to become what they were for our team that was so significant and important during that era. It was all because of Wayne Britton. He was a master in disguise and because he wasn't one of those guys that went out there and sold himself to the media or to the board, he copped it at the end of 2002 and that was a big mistake. Big mistake. I think there was a couple of mistakes. I think one of the big mistakes too was when, when they sacked Raven. You know what I mean? I think that was a massive mistake. I, I think they were, I don't know what they were thinking. Man. They so weren't. They weren't <laughs> thinking. You know, can go through a list of them. Yeah, you can go through a list of them. That's it, that's it. No, 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 that's it. Just quickly, that uh, when you achieved the 95, right? I don't know if you can explain this, but. As a, as a fan, I can tell you what I felt in the stand, but what, what was it like? Is it relief? What, what is it like when you get there? Is it relief? Yeah, oh yeah. Is it? Is it a relief? Oh, well, mate, that was the greatest day of my life. The emotions I never can experience. And when I think of the heartache and pain I went through three and a half years to try to become this senior player, and then it all unfolded in 95 the way it did. And to be in that team that we were in, to lose only two games the entire year, I mean, 16 <coughs> games in a row, it just all came together, and that was just an unbelievable feeling. And uh, 
I don't know when it sunk in, but I look back now and think, geez, I'm a lucky man that I played at that time to got the experience of the players that I played with, but I thank them every single day. And I look back and you always have a fond memory or that bond, you know, between your teammates when you're in premiership together. Yeah, that that lasts forever. And uh, yeah, what a time it was in particular. I think in the 90s, 80s and 90s, in particular the 90s was the best football. That, that was played and it was exciting yeah, and me. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. I loved we it. and the supporters that we had and we were definitely kings of the city whether we walked out live on the street or no matter what we did man like, I've seen you had a few nights nice yeah, you were the king of the city I really no I was, was, was a really club of choice anyway. was a club of choice <laughs> We started at Cafe Clickers, no, I started Metro, no, Cafe Clickers, Metro, that's sort of that period, World Nightclub, Chevron to Saloon Bar, Chevron a bit, but my, my, one of my favourites was Chasers. Oh, Chasers. Chasers. Chasers on a Sunday night was really a European night, and that was, <laughs> that was my favourite, and when we played Friday night, Saturday, doesn't matter, Sunday night, I was there, first time I was there, it was unbelievable, man. You could do that now. No, 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 we were lucky, mate, at our time when we played, like, we were just, Left alone, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, to yeah, go out, like, yeah. we, we trained hard, played hard, but we played hard as in we drank too, and that yeah, was our yeah. culture. But then we, we came, we backed it up yeah, by playing good again that exactly. next week. Exactly. It was just a great time to be alive. And it was when it, it was just unbelievable time to grow up. When you think now the way the world is and the way the country is, how lucky we were during that time. It was just no trouble anywhere, and we could just go out and have fun, and we all did, and that's all we did. to be alive. It really was. Yeah, 100%. Uh, still keeping fit by the yeah. looks of it. So what are you doing now? Just holding on, just holding on. So you do a couple of things. You do uh, Herbalife. Yeah, Herbalife, yeah. Herbalife, and you also do the Cuda Fit. Well, Cuda Fit's all around the Herbalife base around the So I use the Herbalife Nutrition. Yep. And now, of course, I'm doing community training. It's called Active 24. I'm going to convert the name to Cuda Fit. And that's out in Bandura, Mernda. Yep. Nice. So we do that, yeah. So far, it's a one night each, but we're looking to possibly expand that. We do a lot of online training. Uh, online challenges and stuff so we have yep. a lot of clients and we do this even we have international clients and that as well so our team can like you know expand internationally do we want to and so we travel a lot which we haven't during COVID and it's you know work from home business that I worked for three years to build it up to where it was yep. to get it to a position where it was more like a full time thing for me and yeah so I enjoy it because after football I was really lost I was uh, yep. I went through a low period yeah a low period in my life and then I needed to find something where I could go out and work have goals again, achieve things that I want to yeah, achieve and get their mind back to the way that it was, you know. I'll never forget footy and I'll always love footy more than anything, I think, in, you know, in this world. But what I've found now is another love and passion for something else, so that's good. Yeah. That's good. So let, let everyone know, so there's her. There's her life, yeah. They can find me on, if they follow me on Instagram, or yeah, follow me on Instagram. Instagram. Put up the feeds at the bottom. We're going to put up all the feeds yeah, And they can hit me up on there if they're keen to know about the products or whatever. And I always ring people. I'm a bit old school. I don't just mess it. Don't oh, know. I like I'm it. old school. And, yeah, uh, I like the old school. Yeah, yeah. It's the best school, man. I know, they don't know. The old school, man, that's it. Don't put me in the He's all right. He, he's an old soul. No, I'm an old soul. I'm an old soul. Now, your, your kids as well, what are they looking at with regards to sports? You've got two boys and a young daughter as well. They, are they into basketball and footy or just, just basketball? My oldest boy is just basketball. So yep. plays the Coburg Giants. My daughter nice. doesn't really do any sport. Yep. And uh, my young boy, Lucas, plays both basketball and footy. So okay, he's doing nice. well. He's only 11. Though. He's awesome. a long way to go. He's a mad... He's a mad blue supporter. Mate. Good. He wants to go. I thought you were going to say something different. <laughs> no, no, mate. He's blues through and through. He wants to go. He wants to go to train. He wants me to take him to training. Which I might try. I'll try school holidays because of COVID. It might be hard, but he he could hang there the whole. He would stay there the whole day and hang with the players. He wants to go to the cheer squad. He wants to, he's fanatic, he loves it. Nah, we'll, we'll, we'll give him a shout out, what's their name? Uh, my oldest boy is Jamie, my daughter's Monique, my young boy is Lucas. Oh, there you go, yeah. Jamie, Monique and Lucas. Alright. Pleasure mate, Mate, Thank this you has been much. like, really, a pleasure and a dream. And now, like, I know you've won the Premiership, right? But now you are a legend of the <laughs> Jumper Fund. <laughs> that, that I'm never doing <laughs> <laughs> A legend of the Jumper Fund. <laughs> we haven't got presents, we've just got our presents. Yeah, that's right, it. <laughs> it's an honour, boys, out of everything. I'll put this higher than the AFL Hall of Fame. I like it, I like it. You will, one day you're going to look back. I hey. cherish You're going to say, this is a legend of Punch, Premiership player, yeah. Australian Hall of Fame. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, no, man, we appreciate it, man. Thank you, thank you, boys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Why don't we finish off? Go Blues. Go Blues.